Hey everybody, it's Eric here with GMFlash.com. Today we're going to be going over the basic install of a computer. Uh, we've covered it in a truck. Uh, we're going to cover the full from install to flashing. Uh, the procedure for the vehicle we're working on is the O5 G or GTO. It's going to be just a little bit different than most uh, GM vehicles. Uh, at least everything non-global A. Uh, which is basically everything 2015 and newer uh, all across the board GM. Uh, so today, E40 computer, this car has been giving me a fit for a while. Uh, the computer went bad, we were able to reflash it, uh, bring it back to life, but it still has, uh, it's still throwing random codes, but these E40 computers are notorious for going bad. So there was a back order, finally got it in. It's been sitting here for a while, I've been trying to get some time to do it. So what a better time than uh, Christmas Eve. Um, so how do you identify a computer? First things first, on most computers, especially of this style of computer, uh, it's going to be stamped into the front case, and you probably won't be able to see that, but right there it says E40. Also on the back, it's stamped E40. Uh, part number uh, definitely matters. Um, that doesn't have to be a matching part number. Does it, have to be, it does have to be a compatible interchange, um, because there's going to be multiple part numbers uh, that will fit multiple vehicles. So the part number does matter for getting it down to the particular vehicle to see if it uh, is compatible for flashing. So that kind of does matter. So like on 99 through 07 GM trucks, with that style of computer, they all look identical pretty much, except for the Darmax computers uh, from, uh, uh, was it 05 or 05 or 04 and a half on? Um, they are a little bit different looking, uh, but the rest of the, com the truck computers, all the gas stuff, they're all the same. So, in order to figure out what's what, you got to have the part number or get it down to the interchange. So on this computer, obviously, the brand new Reman computer, I don't believe they make these brand new anymore. Um, if anybody knows what goes wrong with these E40s, please let me know because I'd love to repair the one I have in the car. Um, anyway, E40 computer, we know it's compatible. We're brand new from the dealership, a brand new rebuilt from the dealership. Uh, We're going to go ahead and start going through the process of taking disconnecting the battery, removing the PCM, hooking it back up, battery back up, and then we're gonna go through the whole flash process. A lot of people ask me um, all the time, like, well, the dealer says it's gonna take two or three hours to program. For most things, it doesn't take very long to program. Um, this vehicle is just a little bit different for the security aspect of it, which we cover in a different video, which we're gonna cover again here today. But for the most part, this is almost the exact same process you'll use on all GM components. Um, from gauge clusters to body control modules to PCMs, whatever it may be, this is pretty much the same process. Uh, my security alarm, most, uh, depending on what you're replacing, uh, most things don't require the security alarm unless it's like a, a ignition, a body control module, or a PCM, except for the Global A cars, which is something we're not gonna talk about here today. Those are completely different. Absolutely hate them, but it's gonna be uh, a little more difficult to do your own work on the Global A cars. But for stuff like this, you can order it pre-programmed. The E40 is a little different in the fact that the security is different. So you can't exactly program all these E40s, uh, especially for the GTO. Uh, with the Trailblazer and stuff like that, I believe you can uh, you can just do a regular 30 minute security learn, but we'll talk more about that later. So let's get started. We'll disconnect the battery and uh, start installing this PCM. All right, so first things first, we need to disconnect the negative cable off the battery. All right, now the negative cable's taken off. Now we need to unclip all the safety locks out of the connectors going to the PCM. With the safety locks disconnected. Unlock the connector by pushing it on the tab and sliding the lock forward. Wiggle of the connector out. All right, so now that's disconnected, looks like we're gonna need a Torx to uh, on uh, bolt the computer from its adapter or from its uh, mounting bracket. We're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back. So now the Torx have been removed that hold the computer to the bracket. So what we're gonna do is simply swap in the new computer, re-screw it down, and then we're gonna start plugging in the connectors. All right, take our negative cable, throw it back on the battery, make sure it's fully seated. 
and we'll just crank her down. All right, now that that's done, I don't have a charger here at the house. Everything's at my shop, but I do have a small trickle charger that I use to keep the batteries alive since this car sits for a majority of the year. Uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to plug that in. So if the voltage does drop, it should kick on and give it just a little bit of a trickle charge. Uh, normally you'd want to use, I prefer a battery pack. Um, GM has a, um, a charger they like you to use that only has clean power, which is the reason I like the battery pack. And make sure if you're using the battery pack, it's fully charged. But I'm going to go ahead and plug in, plug in this trickle charger to the car, and we'll get started on the programming. So let's talk about compatibility again for just one second. So when you call your local dealership or salvage yard especially, what we're going to need right, is right here, this service number. The service number is the identifier uh, for the particular PCM. The dealership, I believe, and don't quote me, but a lot of dealerships have said as long as it has these certain letters or whatever to certain customers that you know you can use it for compatibility, what will work. I can't use, for our system, I can't use the letters, so it means absolutely nothing to 9% of the salvage yards out there that use our particular interchange system. But what you need to have when you call a salvage yard looking for a replacement PCM, or you call us looking for a replacement PCM, is a service number. The service number tells me everything I need to know about compatibility. So right there on the tag, hopefully you can see it. Some of them are in different, different places, but they're usually always on the tag. Uh, service number right there. You know, also, when you're calling us, if you call with, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see it there, it's stamped E40 right there and stamped E40 again on the front of the case. If you call with that to let us know what style series computer it is, it helps us a little bit, makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but make sure service number is what you need when you're looking for compatibility. All right, so now we're hooked up to the, the car with our passer device. Uh, we're logged into what is called service programming system, which is available through uh, General Motors aftermarket uh, or AC Delco. So this is exactly what the dealership uses to program. Uh, they're going to be using a different passive device. They're going to be using the MDI or the MDI2. Uh, we're using a generic passive device for this particular application. Um, but this is how it would be done exactly if you took it to the dealership. There's absolutely no difference doing it on the car this way. So we're going to go through to the next screen. We're going to select the vehicle. So the vehicle is a 2005 Pontiac. And 2005. And before I go to the next screen, I am actually going to cycle the ignition off. All right, the ignition has been cycled on. Now it's going through its self checks. We are going to select passenger car. We are going to select GTO. And hopefully the thing will shut up here shortly. All right, so now it is reading the VIN off the vehicle. Let's double check the VIN. The VIN is not right, so this is clearly left over from the previous uh, previous vehicle. Let's go through our drop down list and see if we still have it in there. Yep, right there. So it read the VIN off the old PCM or the, the PCM that we just installed, the rebuilt model. So this here is the VIN that we're using, which is the vehicle VIN. Just double checking it here real quick. 4966. Next. All right, so now we're going to do powertrain control module programming. It is a manual transmission. And this won't take long, but this particular vehicle takes a couple seconds. You're supposed to cycle the ignition, but I like to live dangerously. All right, so here it comes up to the calibration screen. This is all the things that are available to calibrate. If they would be, or this is all things it's gonna load calibrations for. For the system, for the fuel system, speedometer, et cetera, et cetera. If there were updates for these or different calibrations you could choose, it would bring a drop down here. And uh, as of like you see right here and have multiple ones, you'd have to choose which one you want. And they all give different, uh, 
different things about what it does um, so you can make the best choice for what you're programming. Uh, some address issues, some you only need to program if you have issues. Uh, Allison 6B controllers are notorious for that. Some things uh, set certain DTCs and they have a update fix for that. But anyway, we don't have any of those choices here, so we're going to hit next. It shows everything that's gonna load, and now it's gonna program. Some of these computers do take about 10 minutes, depending on the computer. This one here should only take about three or four minutes, uh, but some computers do take a long time. The Bosch computers and the newer computers, like uh, the E was the E69, and uh, some of the newer computers just seem to take a long time to program. And as you can see, it started a program and it actually goes fairly quickly. So as you can see, this is going to take about six minutes now that it's leveled off on the timer. So we're just going to let this go. All right, so now the uh, controller has been completely reprogrammed. So after the controller reprogram, we need to go to clear DTCs. It will do a global DC, DTC clear. All right, now all the uh, DTCs have been cleared, so we're gonna read the special functions. So anything that may be specific to your vehicle will be listed here after the uh, programming. So first thing to clear the DCs, and the second says after programming a new PCM, PIM to PCM linking must be performed using, using the SPS pass-through method. Crankshaft position variation relearn procedure using the special functions of Tech 2 or any scan tool. Uh, refer to the manual DTC 1336 system variation not learned, which is the uh, crankshaft position sensor. So anyway, in order to get the vehicle started, we're going to proceed with the same VIN. We're going to go to Next, and we're going to go to PIM to PCM Linking Setup. 
or next, we'll go next. It's gonna launch a special application, PIM to PCM, or PIM link to ECM. We're gonna select next. Then we're just gonna ask for the security code of the vehicle. So we're gonna put in our security code. Now it's going to go and initialize the PIM to the PCM. We are going to say ECM was replaced. All right, so now that the PIM has been relinked to the ECM, let's go ahead and clear the DTCs one more time. And that'll pretty much be it for the install of an ECM into an 05 GTO. This procedure is very similar to what you're gonna do on any GM vehicle or any dealer's gonna do on any GM vehicle. Uh, some of the flash times do vary. Some are pretty quick, some are longer. This particular computer is uh, probably about on average, you know, you're looking around five minutes or so to flash an ECM. Um, like I said, there is a special procedure that has to be done for the crankshaft variation learn, uh, which we will cover in another video. Uh, this particular vehicle has a tune on it, so I've got to relicense our tune file, put the tune back on it, and then I will uh, fire it up for the first time after I do that. Um, but like I said, it's pretty simple. There's really not much to it. Um, anybody that has any issues, uh, try and do this on their own with their own equipment. Hopefully this will help you out or any shops that are trying to do this with their own stuff. This will at least give you an overview. And for people out there that are just curious about how the whole procedure works or when you take it to the dealer, what they're actually doing, we get, like I said, a lot of people call and say, hey, it takes two or three hours to program. Unless, there, I know there's a ra couple of radios out there, some of the newer radios take a while to flash, but for most part, PCMs, e or PCM, ECMs, the BCMs, stuff like that, about five minutes uh, for a flash time, that's about it. Now, the difference between this PCM and this vehicle in particular versus a lot of the other vehicles that are non-global A cars. So after you replace the controller, um, they have to do what's called the VTD relearn, uh, basically a complete security relearn of the vehicle. This has a different, a different immobilizer setup, so that's why this procedure is different. So with a computer that's pre-flashed, or if you buy one from us that's pre-flashed, you'll have to do a 30 minute key relearn on it. If you have access to the tech line here, the service programming system, you'd be able to go in and if you go to proceed with same VIN after you flash your controller, if you had the VTD relearn option, it's going to be listed right here. The VTD relearn option allows you to do a 10 minute, um, a 10 minute security reset. So basically when you take it to the dealer, they flash it or anybody that has the SPS terminal, uh, when they reflash it, they'll be able to go do the VTD relearn, set it and forget it. So 10 minutes later, they come back, cycle the key and the security has been reset. So without that, the manual way is to just do the 30 minute key relearn. Uh, unfortunately, vehicles like the GTO, you're not able to do that. The Global A cars, they have the immobilizer, you're not really able to do that. So the car years that you can do that now on are gonna be limited to pretty much everything 13 and back, or 13 and older. Uh, the 13 and newer stuff, uh, definitely 15, everything uh, GM 15 and newer is all Global A, but uh, there's a good chunk of Global A cars in 13. Really, I think they had one car in 2007 and slowly from 2007 they've been adding cars, but everything 2015 and up is all Global A. But this will give you a good idea. So if the dealer tells you it's gonna take two or three hours to reprogram a controller, they're full of it, literally you know, 20 minutes at the most is all they need plus the install of the computer time. So figure on average an hour of time for a, a computer install. Um, but if anybody was interested in how the procedure works and how the programming works, this is exactly how it's done. And it would be the same for basically any other controller that uh, you would uh, be programming um, for the vehicle. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks, have a great holiday weekend.